hello everybody again um yeah so <laughs> oh my god um it's not often i'm speechless but i'm speechless today i never picked up the other day that this guy jeffrey jackson had stated that when the Great Tribulation started, that there would be time for those who had left the organisation or who hadn't taken it very, very seriously to be able to <laughs> come back. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just staggering. Um, so uh, I, I just Googled, well, never got put in the great, what is a Great Tribulation? I don't know how. This is, um, I don't think this is all that long ago, I can't eat it, I can't tell. Um, events during the Great Tribulation, according to the uh, JW.Borg, destruction of false religion with surprising speed, false religion will be destroyed. The political powers represented by the United Nations will carry out God's will in taking this action. Then we're going to have the attack on true religion. A coalition of nations referred to in his equals vision as Gog of the Land of Magog will try to annihilate those who practice true religion. However, God will protect his worshippers from destruction. Then the judgment of Earth's inhabitants. Now, as we're probably aware, if you're, as, if you're in, in the organisation, but I, I was, I was, and I'm going to have to look this up because um, I knew there was something and I missed this one, but this whole... Um, the God of the Land of Magog, I was always told, and we were always led to believe, that after the thousand years of the paradise, and then this God of Magog was supposed to be Satan, then he was supposed to be released with all his demons, and then they would then test all the inhabitants of the earth to whether they were happy for their newfound you know, everlasting life, and somehow they'd somehow take a lot of people uh, with them, um, and a lot of people would join them saying no we're not happy to live in paradise on earth and then eventually they would surround the people who were happy to live on earth on paradise and then God would finally come in and destroy God of Magog and all the uh, resurrected witness, all, all the resurrected unrighteous ones who decided that everlasting life was not for them. However according to this I never realised, you know, naughty, 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 not for not keeping up with their um, new, new light, new shite is that part of this Gog, uh, land of Magog, um, this is when um, the attack on true religion happens um, after the destruction of false religions. So I'm a bit confused now. Um, maybe somebody can tell me who's out there. Is do the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that after Armageddon, uh, after the 1000 year of Jesus Christ, will Satan be released from Hades, the abyss, or where it is, to then attempt to convert people to the dark side of the force? If anybody can answer that for me, not having to look this up, because I really don't want to, I'd appreciate it. So anybody who's only recently left the organisation, who, who was chums, still in the organisation, or wants to bother doing the research for me, because I can't be arsed, please do this. Let me know, is it still the Jehovah's Witnesses belief that that occurs because I was led to believe that this was the whole God of the Land of Magog thing happened so I need to I need clarification on that one um, however let's just go back to um, the other bits the destruction of uh, false religion by um, um, the United Nations and I did a video a few years ago whereupon I actually said that it was absolutely impossible there was no way on this earth that the United Nations has the power to um, destroy all the religions in this world, just close down every synagogue, every mosque, every church, every temple. It's just impossible when you look at... You know, when you look, what would they do? What, what I was saying at the time, what would they do? Whose armies would they do? How would they go into places like Iran, Iraq, Israel, Palestine, all the rest of them, all the Muslim countries, and somehow change what is happening here? It's absolutely impossible this is going to happen because they don't have the resources. For instance, when we just look at what recently has happened with uh, Russia invading uh, the Ukraine, 
did the United Nations step in then? What could the United Nations do? What did the United Nations do during the Balkan Wars? What did the United Nations do when uh, in the, the massacre, uh, massacres in, in the UN? Um, what's the United Nations doing at the moment? We have a group of people who are, there's people dying as we speak right now. And, and ironically, I'm using a picture from the Watchtower, from JW.org, and that picture could be uh, Gaza at the moment. This could be this could be Gaza at the moment with explosions inside, with 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 people uh, with no houses. It could be stone there, and that that's that's an art illustration. We don't need an artist illustration. We can just turn on the TV and what's happening in the Gaza Strip, any time to see the reality of when religion gets involved, that my religion's better than your religion, and my God says we belong in this land, and your God says you belong in that land. land. This is what's happened. To think that the, the witnesses have said that the United Nations, the United Nations can somehow close stop everybody practicing their faith is complete utter bollocks. I've said this, they don't have the manpower. Can you imagine? You know, we've got people here who are willing to go into Israel, and know it could be a suicide mission. We knew we, the Palestinians, uh, the, the, the Palestinians went into there, that the, the, these guys from Ga the Gaza Strip went into there knowing that a lot of them wouldn't come back. And what I think about a thousand of them never came back. They knew a lot of them that the case was a suicide, but they thought they were doing it because they, their, their version of their belief meant that if they do it, that they are, you know, rewarded in whatever version of heaven they think they're going to. They thought they can do that, so they're quite happy to do this. Quite happy to do these horrible things that they, they did. And obviously now we're getting horrible things happening in Gaza where we've got other people quite happy to do what they're doing, where men, women and children are dying on a minute-by-minute -minute basis at the moment. I mean, we, the, the witnesses believe that somehow this organisation, the United Nations, can somehow stop this happening? It is utter bollocks. Close down every temple, synagogue, you know... If you put a UN guard in front of a temple, he would last five seconds before, you know, a suicide guy goes up and blows this guy himself into the guy to this and said, right, the temple's open, let's go back in. The mosque is, 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 is open, let's go back in. It's utter bollocks. Yet that's not what this is about. This is about the fact that we were always led to believe is that you would get the, um, the UN would turn on the World Empire First Religion and then onto the attack on true religion and the only faith, the only faith in all these religions in the world, the only faith, uh, you know, that would still be standing saying we still want to worship our God would be Jehovah's Witnesses. That somehow every other religion in the world decided, despite being part of their family trees and their, their, their belief back a thousand years or whatever it is, that somehow the Jehovah's Witnesses have only existed for 150 years, whatever again, that they be the only ones. All these Muslims, all these Israelites, all the other religions, you know, the countless religions would be just quite happy to see their mosque and their temple and their church and their synagogue closed down and just say, okay, fair dues. Well, it's a lot of rubbish anyway. Quite happy with that. And the only ones who say, oh, no, 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 we still want to attend the kingdom all. Ironic, because of course during COVID, guess what happened? All the kingdom halls were closed down. Uh, yes, they were all closed down. They did the Jehovah's Witnesses to them and say, "No, we still want to keep on. We still want to keep on meeting. We still want to go out preaching." No, they decided to do what was dictated to them by whichever government or country uh, they, they they lived in. So at that point, what happened to them? Oh, no, 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 our kingdom halls must stay open. No, 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 no. We must carry on preaching this important good news of the kingdom. Nothing's going to stop us. No government is going to tell us that we are going to have to shut our kingdom halls and our preaching work has got to, uh, got to be stopped. Yet that's exactly what happened all over the world. So somehow, somehow, bizarrely, they, they listened to the government then, but somehow they're not going to listen to the UN. It is just bollocks. But this is not what this is about. This is not what this is about. This is on about the fact that this guy, Jeffrey Jackson, the guy I last probably saw him doing anything that was on this Australian Royal Commission, um, making an absolute arse about himself, 
he's now coming on saying that when all of a sudden this event which is impossible to happen according uh, according to everybody's at half a brain but according to him it will happen when this event happens that those who've been on the periphery of the witnesses who have left the witnesses who've never taken it seriously and have known that Jehovah's Witnesses have been saying oh by the way the UN is going to turn on the will damp of false religion you go what a lot of bollocks. When all of a sudden this event happens, all of a sudden, guess what? There's going to be a window of opportunity for all these ones when you finally see a physical manifestation of, of um, pre-Armageddon happening that they can actually d decide at that point, actually, you know what? This whole Jehovah's Witness malarkey is actually true. I remember having a Bible study, I remember a magazine, or my mum has been saying, or my brother's been saying, or my wife has been saying, or my children have been saying, or my neighbour's been saying, that this event is going to happen. And guess what, I think, yeah, all of a sudden my heart has changed. My heart has now changed because I now realise that they were talking the truth. There's some physical evidence that the Jehovah's Witnesses were right all along. Um, is there an opportunity for me now, despite I've been leaving quite, leading quite a worldly and immoral life, to all of a sudden see the errors of my ways and to then say, any chance lads, before they close down the Kingdom Halls, um, like they did in Covid, uh, that I can have a Bible study and I can then uh, be saved at Armageddon. At which point, all of a sudden, the, the witnesses are going to turn around and go, yes, yes, clearly Jehovah wants you to be saved. Ironic, because I would have thought for a lot of these Jehovah's Witnesses, it would be the case of um, the prodigal son returning. The prodigal son who just goes out, lives in a moral life, blows the family fortune, comes back when he's got nothing left at all. And then all of a sudden, you know, his father, you know, big feast, here you go, you know, slaughter the fattened calf. And the, the, the poor brother who stayed there, uh, the son who stayed there and, 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 you know, did what he was supposed to do felt completely miffed. And in all, in, in quite reality of this, if you were a Jehovah's Witness who then saw maybe your physical brother leaving the organisation, having the time of his life, holidays galore and, you know, literally sowing wild seeds, Evans style, all over the world, and then you know, just doing what they like and not being interested in looking after the mum and dad or whatever and just saying, oh, it's a load of shit. And then all of a sudden, when all of a sudden the, the, the UN turns on the World Empire False Religion and goes, oh, I better get back because now I actually believe it's true. And for that, your brother saying, what, you're coming back? Yeah, I am. And then you go, hold on a second, Jehovah. Hold on a second, Jehovah, what's going on here? He's gone out and led a worldly life I've been here, I've done no holidays, I've pioneered, I've <laughs> never got married, oh, never had sex, oh, it was, and it was, it was with my wife for once and it was shit, and, you know, just the whole thing, how are they going to feel? But ironically, even Jeffrey Jackson actually mentions that, you know, people are going, oh, no, and he says, no, that's not how it's supposed to be, and my, my mind's blown at this moment, I just, you know, for instance, what we've been, what I believed, that when we believed them, when the Great Tribulation started, that obviously we'd all, help, we'd all, you know, quickly find out where the nearest bunker was, you know, get get out Google Maps. <laughs> nearest Jehovah's Witness bunker. Oh, it's only 18 miles away. Fuck. You know, it's just bizarre. So instead, we've got this window of opportunity that all of a sudden, the, you know, the World Empire and Falsehood start to get attacked by the UN. And then when people stop this happening, all those ones who've left the organisation or have been on the periphery or on the edge, who have just decided, since the fact they don't have to count time anymore, have decided, I tell you what, boys, you won't see me on the cart. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in and I'll, I'll zoom in the meetings uh, instead of actually watching Netflix. But I'll, I'll say I've logged in anyway. And all of a sudden they'll go, shit. And then they'll come back. And then they will come back just in time before this attack on true legend by the Coalition of Nations, uh, Gog of the Land of Magog. And I'll be back just in time to realise it has been the truth. And I can thank my lucky stars that we've been given this window of opportunity when I believed, we all believed, that when the Great Tribulation started, 
that basically if you were on the wrong side of the faith at that particular point, there was no coming back. There was no window of opportunity for you to come back to being a witness. It's just staggering. If I tell you what, if I was a Jehovah's Witness right now, I'd actually have no enthusiasm to carry on at all. I would be thinking, well, why don't I do what my physical brother's done? Or all the youngsters that I grew up with have done where they've gone away, they've done what they like, they've just decided to, you know, why am I chapping doors? Why am I standing on carts? What works next to a cart? I'm not speaking to anybody, obviously. Why am I attending kingdom, the kingdom of Wrigley? I may as well just go out, do what I like, see how events unfold, and if I die before these events start, I know that I'm going to get a resurrection because I'll be included in either the righteous or the unrighteous, or come back anyway. And, and, but, if the Great Tribulation starts, I'll then see, actually it has been true all this time, and I will then quickly um, make preparations to then start coming back to the, the few kingdom halls that's opened, or zooming in on these uh, meetings from the bunker, or just going back to my brother and mother, uh, mother and father and go, Hi! I'm back again! Hey! Good timing. I would, you know, if I was a Jehovah's Witness right now, I'd actually think, I'd be thinking I've been cheated. I'd be thinking I've been cheated. For those who've loyally kept going through all of this, I think right now I'd be feel cheated. And that whole thing that I did the other day, that they are this new light and they feel they don't have to make an apology, I'd be demanding an apology from somebody right now, asking how come all of a sudden there's this been new light coming out what happened to um, the previous belief where you believed that once um, things started taking place in the Great Trib Tribulation, that that was it. Dep at that point, you know, if you went on one side of the fence or the other, you know, you would make your, your decision, there was no sitting on the fence. So if now as a, a Jehovah's Witness, I'd just sit on the fence or go on the other side. And if, 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 if events change, just come back. That's what I would do. Where is the incentive right now to remain one of Jehovah's Witnesses when you, because as I said before, the whole point of being a Jehovah's Witness is not for a, it's not a career. It's not you, you just sort of the way of life. You're doing it to save your life. You're doing it so you will be preserved at Armageddon or you're doing it uh, hopefully that you'll get a resurrection in the paradise. That's why you are a Jehovah's Witness because you don't know the hour or the day and because you want to preserve your life. You want to run this race. That's why you're Jehovah's Witness. People don't go and stand at carts for the goodness at their heart knowing that there isn't an end game. If there wasn't an end game, who would be a Jehovah's Witness? Who would then say, I won't go to school, I won't do secular work, get a career, do college, um, go out and sow some, some wild uh, Lloyd oats out in places in the world, just go and see as much of the world as we can, do what I can, when I can, how I can. You know, you wouldn't do, you know, obviously at that point, you're sacrificing all those things because you want to, on this steady course, because you want to be preserved in this time of the end through my Armageddon. And now they're turning around to you and say, yes, thank you for your little sacrifices. Thank you for everything you've done. But guess what? Your brother, your physical brother, who left the organisation at 16 and has had a right good time to himself and maybe more physically and mentally fit than you are, can easily come back when he obviously sees what the UN are going to do and say, hello, how cheated would you feel? So anyway, that's all I've got to say about this particular uh, thing. I never, I didn't pick on, on this before. If this is what's been now being taught, I am staggered. I am literally, utterly staggered by this. To me, uh, it's a bit like the whole thing when they changed the um, generation thought. I felt cheated at the time because I realised that it wasn't coming anytime soon. And I think for any Jehovah's Witnesses now, they must feel utterly cheated if they had kept the fine on that road when they now they can actually go come off the road. They can actually, what they can do is... <laughs> 
they can come out of that race and rejoin it at a later date and still cross that line. Wow. I, I literally am speechless. However, going back to my earlier point, if somebody wants to tell me if it's still the, the thought that Jehovah's Witnesses believe that after the thousand year reign of, of Christ's reign that, that, that Satan be released again, tell me what the, the understanding is on that one because I'm confused. Well, I'm, I think everybody's confused at the moment. Yes, it's, uh, wow, it, this is not the organisation that, that, that I grew up in, it's just staggering. Anyway, I'll leave that with you. Well, I, well, I think about that for the next... <laughs> I can't get over it. Anyway, see you later, bye-bye.